Uh, hello, welcome to- uh, I did a step early. Hi, hello, welcome to Spell Day. We're covering a spell every single day of the year from the 5e PHB plus 3. Those specialty spells are homebrew spells. We're at plus 2 at the moment. You can head back and play this to find them. Today's spell is Ray of Frost. Evocation cantrip, casting time of one action, range of 60 feet, components verbal, somatic, duration, instantaneous. Frigid beam of blue-white light streaks toward a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the target. On a hit, it takes 1d8 cold damage, and its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. Spell's damage increased by 1d8 when you reach 5th level for 2d8, 11th level 3d8, and 17th level 4d8. Now you see, that's a cantrip with a nice bonus effect. It reduces their speed. Why doesn't poison spray poison? Anywho, to avoid touching on poison spray for too much, 60 feet's all right. The main thing I've used, seen this used for is the minus 10 foot speed, namely in chase scenes, because it's a cantrip that slows. Not literally the slow spell, but it, it does something equivalent. It reduces speed. Now, I've also seen people pick this up just for flavor reasons of my character uses ice as spell casting. That's great. The fact that this also has something that reflects them getting frozen or freezing up and being shivering on the battlefield is amazing. Well, not literally in the mechanical implications amazing, but amazing in, thank goodness this actually has some kind of ice effect and not just frost damage. But I've seen this used on battlefields to specifically slow a target or give opportunities for people to move or for enemies to be trapped in an area of effect for a bit longer. Chase scenes on trying to get someone to slow down either in front of them or behind them. And the battlefield control, while limited, it's a cantrip. And you're doing damage on top of that. So for free, you're limiting the total radius someone can move by 10 feet, or 20 if they're dashing, and also dealing damage to boot. There's not a save on their end either, it's just up to you hitting an attack roll. That's not bad. I mean, it really isn't. It's 60 foot, all right, action, fine. If you if you're holding concentration on something else that you can do on a bonus action or just a passive effect ticking away, using this on top of that is not bad. I mean, yeah, it doesn't do as much damage as Firebolt, but Firebolt doesn't do any additional effect on the target. This slows them. So if you consistently hit them every turn, that's minus 10 speed for the entire combat, potentially, if you're holding concentration on something else to do damage outside of just that or you're just focusing them down with Frostbolt. And even when it comes to fast creatures, like I remember uh, an adult dragon someone was trying to run away from and managed to hit them with Frostbolt against their AC, and it was just enough movement to where they could get to cover. They would have been caught out into a melee and likely have died, but they managed to squeeze into a tunnel after that. Fantastic. Six out of 10, all right. Doesn't do as much damage cantrip wise. It still takes an action, so you're not using an action to cast something else. But being able to just Minus 10, it's not the, okay, the reason this, it's not the grandest effect. It's not too amazing, still a little situational, and depending on the speed of the enemy and the exact situation you're in, might not matter if they have less speed, or might not make too much of a dent if they have minus 10. It's a flat minus 10. It's not something rolled, it's not something random, and it's still an additional effect tied to an already damaging cantrip. But no, it's still reliable. It's just not the most amazing. It's got a soft spot here, though. Soft spot here for it, though.